Once again, I welcome you to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. In my previous lecture, I initiated discussion on chemistry of uh, uh, group 1 elements that is alkali metals. Today, let me continue from where I had stopped. Okay. I was discussing about uh, the interaction of alkali metals with oxygen and sulfur. Uh, let me uh, recap whatever I said in my last class about how they interact with uh, oxygen and all these compounds react with oxygen to form oxide, peroxide or superoxides. Lithium forms exclusively oxide whereas sodium and potassium form oxide as well as peroxide and rest of the elements form superoxides and these oxides are highly sensitive to moisture, they readily react with moisture or water to give the corresponding uh, alkali solutions. For example, Na2O sodium oxide reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide. Similarly, if you take sodium peroxide, it reacts with one equivalent of water to form initially sodium oxide plus H2O2. Okay. And then if it is reacted with two equivalents of water, it forms 2NaOH plus H2O2. Okay. Similarly, uh, metal reacts with metal nitrate, metal nitrite to form the corresponding metal oxide plus N2 is liberated here. And alkali metals also react with uh, ozone to form ozonate salt. See this is called ozonate salt salt. So, these ozonate salts are paramagnetic in nature. Of course, with sulfur uh, form all these alkali metal sulfides and polysulfides of composition M2 SX. Okay. So, let me write a few uh, reactions involving sulfur or one can take sodium sulfide react with S8. Of course, here also if I write yes, it indicates the reaction stoichiometry is 2 sodium is to 1 sulfur. In case if I am considering S as S8, then what I should do is 1 eighth of S8 I should write okay. or simply S. Okay. So, here Na to S reacts with S8 to form 2 Na to S5 okay. and similarly uh, sodium can also react with uh, tellurium to give a mixture of Na2 Te2 similar to uh, sodium peroxide and Na2 Te3. Okay. And CCM also reacts in a similar fashion yes. and this CCM sulphide reacts with uh, excess of sulphur to give CS2 S5 similar to sodium analog sodium uh, reaction. Lithium 
directly reacts with nitrogen to form lithium nitride. For example, treat 6 equivalents of lithium with nitrogen, it gives 2 Li 3 N. So, you may be surprised to see this reaction happening. In fact, lithium nitride is very stable because of very high lattice energy associated with lithium nitride due to the smaller lithium plus ion and the small highly charged nitride ion that is N 3 minus despite having to break the strong N N bond that exists between two nitrogen atoms. You know that between two nitrogen atoms in nitrogen is a triple bond with energy 954. The bond strength is about 954 kilo joules per mole. So, that means whatever the energy that is needed to break N N bond essentially comes from the lattice energy of formation of lithium nitride. Okay. And despite the salt is stable, this is prone to hydrolysis that means it undergoes hydrolysis to form lithium hydroxide and ammonia is liberated. And just like sodium hydroxide which is base in water, sodium amide is a base in liquid ammonia because it is able to deprotonate acidic molecules such as RH. That means, it is essentially if the H is quite acidic in a organic molecule, it can activate CH bond. If we take uh, one of these alkali metals and put into ammonia, it forms so this indicates that sodium amide is a base in liquid ammonia. What actually happens here can also be written in this fashion two electrons when they are leached out from alkali metals uh, that interacts with ammonia to form amide ions plus H 2 is liberated. Okay. As I mentioned this sodium amide can deprotonate if the H is sufficiently acidic in an organic molecule. For example, if I consider this reaction here, this shows you how a alkyl sodium is generated. So, this is also called sodium amide. So, this gives N A R plus N H 3 is formed. So, this way uh, sodium amide comes very handy in organic reactions to make carbon carbon bonds. Now, let us look into the interaction of alkali metals with hydrogen to form hydrates as I had already mentioned in my early uh, lectures that uh, hydrogen reacts with alkali metals and alkaline earth metals to form ionic hydrates. So, here uh, most of the metals alkali metals react with hydrogen to form the corresponding hydride. For example, in case of lithium, the temperature required is quite high. This is a general reaction of alkali metals with hydrogen to form metal hydride. Okay. So, in case of lithium, temperature required is 1073 Kelvin. Uh, whereas, for other elements reaction happens at relatively lower temperature for rest of the alkali metals one can perform reaction at 673 Kelvin. For all alkali metals. So, 
So, H minus is a very strong base can be used to deprotonate organic molecules containing relatively acidic CH groups, okay, very similar to sodium amide. Uh, here, uh, alkali metal hydrides also can be used to deprotonate organic molecules provided the CH bond is relatively acidic. Let me give an example here. Uh, let us take sodium hydride and treat this one with dimethyl sulfoxide. It gives So, in this fashion all these hydrates can be used to activate CH bond and to carry out a variety of organic transformation in organic synthesis. So, let us look into the interaction of alkali metals with carbon fragments or organic molecules. For example, uh, acetylene reacts directly with alkali metals to form the corresponding carbides or alkyne derivatives. Let us consider acetylene. When acetylene is treated with one equivalent of M, it forms yes, and of course, here H2 is liberated and then on subsequent treatment of this one with two more equivalents of uh, uh, metal, what we get is okay, so this one. So, this is essentially a, a reaction in which ethane or acetylene acts as an acid. Okay. Of course, the extensive organometallic chemistry is associated with alkali metals, especially with lithium. We call lithium organic lithium reagents, for example, n butyl lithium, tertiary butyl lithium, secondary butyl lithium, methyl lithium, phenyl lithium. So, all those things they find numerous applications in a variety of organic transformations. I would elaborate more on the reactivity of alkyl or aryl lithium or organolithium reagents and their utility in organic chemistry when I discuss organometallic chemistry of main group elements that I will be doing after completing the chemistry of all main group elements group wise. This lithium hydride can also be used to make other reducing agents. For example, uh, when lithium hydride is treated with aluminum trichloride it leads to the formation of lithium aluminum hydride very important reagent to reduce or to convert many of the main group halides to the corresponding hydrides. Of course, uh, already I showed you the utility of lithium aluminum hydride in main group chemistry to make the corresponding hydrates. For example, lithium aluminum hydride when it is treated with tetrachlorosilane, it forms silane or tetrahydrosilane. Similarly, lithium aluminum hydride also can be used to make pH bonds corresponding from PCL bonds. Now, let me look into the compounds with halogens. With halogens, alkali metals react to form all type of halides. For example, all alkali metals react with all halogens to make all combinations. Lithium can react with all halogens starting from fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine to form the corresponding halides. In the same way, cesium also can form, but they have little different properties, okay, whereas reactivity as well as their structures. All alkali metals react with halogens to form the corresponding halides. 
and here cesium chloride, cesium bromide and cesium iodide have the same structure whereas sodium chloride has a different structure. The structure of sodium chloride is face centered cubic whereas that of uh, cesium chloride, cesium bromide and cesium iodide is body centered cubic BCC. And in cesium chloride structure the cation and anion are both 8 coordinate that you can see from this one here cesium is 8 coordinated. Similarly, if I continue this lattice, okay, this halides are also 8 coordinated having 8 adjacent alkali metal ions. Whereas, in case of sodium both chlorine as well as sodium are 6 coordinate having a ratio of 1 is to 1 that you can see from the structure here both are octahedrally surrounded by the opposite ions. Some chlorine is surrounded by 6 sodium ions and sodium each sodium is surrounded by 6 chloride ions. So, that means, uh, since we have uh, several halogen compounds of alkali metals all combination is possible then how to predict the structure. Uh, we have a, an empirical formula to predict the structure using simply radius ratio rule. That means, here the structure adopted by a salt m plus x minus can be readily predicted simply by considering the relative sizes of cation and anion and this is nothing but the radius ratio rule. What it says let us see uh, I have uh, listed the radius ratio values for different structure types. For example, when the radius ratio range is between 0.225 to 0.0414. Uh, they assume spolarite structure that is zinc sulphide structure. When the value is between 0 0.414 and 0 0.732, they assume sodium chloride structure. Here they assume that is phase centered cubic structure. When the value is greater than 0 0.732, they prefer cesium chloride structure or body centered cubic structure. So, how far this ratio is reliable to depict the structure of alkali metal halides. The radius ratio rules provide a reasonably general means of assessing the likely structure adopted by an ionic solid. However, it can give incorrect predictions only when there is a significant covalent bonding is there. For example, if you consider lithium halides, most of them because of its uh, uh, charge to size ratio that significantly differs from rest of the alkali metals. There is some covalent character as a result in that case this rule may not predict precisely and because of covalent bonding present in it. The radius ratio near borderline. So, when we have this uh, ratio near borderline for example, when we have 414 or you know it can have either zinc sulphide structure or sodium chloride structure. And again when the value is around 0 0.732 again it can have either sodium chloride structure or cesium chloride structure that means one has to be extremely careful when the values are borderline. And the ionic radii are not known accurately. Uh, so, the values vary with the coordination number of the ion. Okay. So, in those cases what happens the prediction may not be precise. However, it gives a, a rough method to estimate the structure type of alkali metal halides. Let us look into the preparation of some of the organolithium reagents. <coughs> uh, you may be surprised that I did not give the method of preparation of alkali metal halides. Of course, most of the alkali metal halides do occur in nature. Okay. And however, if one has to make any of this alkali metal halide, one can conveniently use the neutralization reaction. For example, sodium hydroxide on treatment with hydrochloric acid gives sodium chloride plus water. So, one can use this method and most commonly this kind of methods are used to prepare alkali metal halides. Now, let me look into the preparation of organolithium reagents several methods we have. One method I will show you and rest of the methods as I said I will be discussing when I start lecture on 
organometallic compounds of alkali metals. When two equivalents of lithium is treated with an all organic halide, uh, one has to remember that these reactions has to be carried out strictly under inert atmospheric condition using dry hydrocarbons and thoroughly dried glass wares. or dry ethers such as diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran and here X can be preferably Cl or Br. Here it forms R Li plus Lix. So, this Lix is insoluble and this can be filtered off and the solution would contain alkyl lithium. So, organolithium compounds are extensively aggregated together in the solid state and solution state as well. For example, methyl lithium exists as a tetramer. Why these compounds have a tendency to associate or aggregate to form higher oligomers is because uh, here just if you can see methyl lithium or organic lithium reagents, it is mono coordinated, when it is mono coordinated at least 3 more vacant sites are there. As a result what happens it is considered as electron deficient. In order to overcome the electron deficiency it will try to undergo association very similar to what we come across in case of uh, BH3 becoming diborane or aluminum trichloride become Al2Cl6. Okay. So, in this case uh, all alkyl uh, lithium reagents prefer to have uh, dimeric or tetrameric structure, methyl lithium prefers a tetrameric structure and the reactivity and its utility is more or less similar to uh, Grignard reagents such as RMGX or di, di or organo reagents such as R2MG. So, if we take generally RLI where R is an alkyl group or aryl group they associate in case of methyl lithium, n-butyl lithium, secondary n-butyl lithium. So, they exist in the form of a tetrameric structure in solid state okay. and when it comes to the reactivity, reactivity is very similar to Grignard reagent. Of course, I will be discussing more about Grignard reagent uh, along with uh, chemistry of group 2 elements and also R2Mg. So, this is how the methyl lithium structure looks like. You can see here it has a cubane structure where alternate corners are occupied by lithium and methyl groups and here it is essentially 2 electron 4 centered bonds are there. And this can also be explained using valence bond theory through hybridization concept as well as molecular orbital theory. I would give more insight into the structure of uh, uh, methyl lithium to start with or in general alkyl lithium compounds as I said again while discussing organometallic chemistry of main group elements. Okay. And this is how it looks like uh, here. So, methyl lithiums, 4 methyl lithiums will associate to form a tetramer having a cubane structure and this can also be visualized here in this uh, RTEP diagram. You can see here these, are, these represent 3 hydrogen atoms on carbon and we have lithium here and it will give you clear idea that one of the sp3 hybrid orbital of uh, methyl a moiety having one electron interacts with uh, 3 lithium atoms, okay, out of 3 lithium atoms, one of the lithium atoms readily give one electron to each methyl group. So, that we have essentially 2 electrons are associated with each methyl lithium and we do not have in excess electrons as a result 2 electrons are shared between uh, 4 atoms. So, alkali metal complexes form relatively very few complexes with neutral ligands and lithium salts are more soluble in solvents such as ethanol, ethers than those of other group members. Lithium is 4 coordinate 
and sodium and potassium are 6 coordinate. Let me discuss more details in my next lecture. Thank you very much and have a pleasant inorganic chemistry reading.